Good day, my friends. We're at Deuteronomy chapter 22. You shall not see your brother's ox or his sheep go astray and hide yourself from them. You shall in any case bring them again unto your brother. And if your brother be not near unto you, or if you know not, or if you know him not, then you shall bring it unto your own house, and it shall be with you until your brother seek after it, and you shall restore it to him again. Verse 3. In like manner shall you do this with his ass, and so shall you do with his raiment, and with all lost thing of your brothers which he has lost and you have found shall you do likewise you may not hide yourself notes now, this law was actually given in uh, Exodus chapter uh, 23 verses 4 through 5 and as is obvious honesty is demanded here in all things verse 4 you shall not see your brother's ass or his ox fall down by the way and hide yourself from them. You shall surely help him to lift them up again. Notes. Well, you're supposed to provide help for those who need such. Verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all who do so are, abomin are an abomination unto the Lord your God. Notes. Uh, <laughs> the divinely instituted distinction between the sexes was to be sacredly observed, and in order to do this, the dress and other things appropriate uh, to the one were not to be used by the other. Uh, whatever tended to obliterate the distinction between the sexes tends to uh, lead to rather different behavior, if you know what I mean. So as not to misunderstand this, both uh, both the men and women in those days wore robes. However, the robes for the men were different from the robes of the women, as would be obvious. Well, at times, presently, women wear slacks or trousers. However, as is also obvious, the trousers worn by a woman are different than those worn by a man. So that means it's not wrong for a woman to wear slacks or, in effect, the trousers, etc., or whatnot. Verse 6. If a bird's nest chance to be before you in the way in any tree or on the ground, whether they be young ones or eggs, or the mother sitting upon the young or upon the eggs, you shall not take the dam with the young. Notes, the word dam, as in D-A-M, is actually the word mother in this case. Verse 7. But you shall in any wise let the dam go, or mother, and take the young to you, that it may be well with you, and that you may prolong your days. Notes. I have a lot to say about this. These precepts are designed to foster humane feelings towards the lower animals, uh, not less to preserve regard to that affectionate relation between parents and the young, which God also established as a law in the animal world. Verse 8. When you build a new house, then you shall make a battlement for your roof, that you bring not blood upon your house, if any man fall from thence. Note, still today, the roof of houses in that part of the world, most of them are actually flat. And as well, during the summer, oftentimes, members of the family would oftentimes sleep on the roof in order to catch the night breeze. Well, a banister was to be erected around the roof to serve as a form of protection. Verse 9. You shall not sow your vineyard with diverse seeds, lest the fruit of your seed which you have sown and the fruit of your vineyard be defiled. You shall not plow with an ox and an ass together. You shall not wear a garment of diverse sorts as of woolen and linen together. Notes. Concerning this, an old preacher by the name of Williams says, Mixed teaching, like mixed seeds, produces sterility. At creation in chapter 1 of Genesis, there was no mixture, and hence there was fertility. Every seed was after his kind and was pronounced by God to be good. The seed that Christian workers and ministers are to sow must be unmixed, the word of God. His word is not to be mixed with man's philosophy, 
Christ the true minister said, I have given them your word, I have not spoken from myself. The ox was clean and the ass was unclean. Together they formed an unequal yoke. When Christian people join with, uh, with the unconverted in Christian work or marriage or business, it is, un, it is an unequal yoke and can never have divine approval. Uh, verse 12. You shall make yourselves fringes upon the four quarters of your vesture wherewith you cover yourself. Notes. And it still goes on some of the time in the Jewish parts of the world. These were tassels with blue thread signifying that they had help that came from above. Verse 13. If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her and give occasion of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman and when I came to her I found her not a maid. Notes. He's basically claiming that she wasn't a virgin. Verse 15. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elder of the city in the gate. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hates her. And lo, he has given occasion of speech against her, saying, I found not your daughter a maid, and yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. And the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise him. Notes. Well, meaning that he had actually lied about the girl because he didn't want her for other reasons, whatever they might have been. Verse 19. And they shall immerse him in a hundred shekels of silver and give them unto the father of the damsel because he has brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel. And she shall be his wife, and he may not put her away all his days. Notes. Well, obviously, if he did so, he was adding sin to sin. Verse 20. But if, if this thing be true, and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel, then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of the father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die because she has wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house, so shall you put away evil from among you. Notes. Well, the nation had to be kept pure, at least as far as possible, because as stated, it was to serve as the womb of the Messiah, so to speak. And as such, immorality was to be put away, if not, and if not, severe penalties would be attached. Verse 22. If a man be found lying with a woman married to an husband, they shall both they shall both of them die, both the man that lay with the woman and the woman. So shall you put away evil from Israel. If a damsel who is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, then you shall bring them both out unto the gates of that city, and you shall stone them with stones that they die. The damsel, because she cried not being in the city, and the man, because he has humbled his neighbor's wife. So shall you put away evil from among you. Notes. Now, this was the case with the young woman who was brought to Jesus by the Pharisees, described in John chapter 8, verse 1 through 11. Now, the difference is, they brought the young woman to Jesus, but didn't bring the man. They were quite ready to stone her, which they used to entrap Christ, and... Of course, their scheme didn't work. However, the law had to be kept by Christ. So how could he say to her, knowing that without a doubt she was guilty of adultery? Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. John chapter 8, verse 11. He kept the law perfectly by dying in her place, exactly as he did for all of us. Therefore, the law was kept perfectly. And we must pick up again in Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 25. Thank you very much and God bless.